Greetings. Thanks so much for joining me. Just like everybody else, I'm trying to um, make the best out of my home confinement, quarantine. And I've recently been doing a lot of dyeing of fabrics. For some reason, dyeing the fabric makes me feel very powerful, kind of like I'm the mistress of color. But anyway, so this is, this is how ice dyeing is done. I've um, folded my cloth. I have three pieces. Two are like kind of scarves, and one is going to be like a sarong sized piece of fabric. So, how it works is that I've made these little aluminum foil tents so that when I put my, my ice in my dye, it kind of becomes like a little personal bath for each cloth. So, let me come out. So. I've already um, taken my fabric and folded it. I use twist ties instead of rubber bands because for some reason I feel like that's easier on my hands. Um, it can be a little tricky when you come to cutting off the um, tw twist ties for anybody who's ever used them. So I have three different designs. I just want to go through the process for my benefit as well as anyone else who would be interested. So I'm going to pause the video and when I come back I will have place ice. This is dye, right? These are all the dyes that I've set on the fabric. The fabric is wet, it's damp, it's been soaked in soda ash to make it receptive of the dyes. Um, so I've set my dye in the places where I want the dyes to interact, right? And I've used a variety of colors. This one is having like blues. I, I have a section of black. I have orange. Now actually I have purple and some blues and some yellow. Um, this one is gonna be my traditional ice bowling green. So this is yellow. This is yellow, red, and then green at the end. And this one is kind of like an elongated. Um, red, gold, and green, and some variety of colors. These are two scarves and one sarong size piece. So I'm going to pause the video and I will be back once I place my ice. See you in a bit. All right, so I maxed out every single ice cube in my house. Um, and for some reason, I always end up with just enough to get by. So I filled all these channels with ice and the process is that the ice will melt slowly and it'll deposit the um, dye in a random muted kind of effect as opposed to just a solid covering right so as you can see this is just totally covered with dye and this was the first one that I covered so the process is that the ice will melt. It'll melt and distribute the color all the way through the folds of the fabric. Um, this has to cure. This has to sit for about 24 hours. Usually I'm too impatient, so uh, it just depends on how it looks when I wake up. So this will be continued until that time. But I just want you guys to get in close and see. You can kind of already see that the ice is melting. I'm kind of concerned that I try something new with these little bolts that I made. That I, it, that um, now that I think about it, like I feel kind of uncomfortable because there is no place to drain. And I would hate for all of the dye to, to flow to the bottom and just kind of sit there. So I think I'm going to make a quick arrangement. I'll be right back. Hello, good morning. It's been about 12 hours since I set this, um, these pieces to dye. And as you can see, the, um, the dye is all melted. And with this technique, right, instead of the dye depositing solidly onto the fabric, it's kind of randomized. I don't know what, what, what the word is, but it gives a different effect than if you just 
um, solidly dye these, these colors into the fabric. So this is the part where I um, will be revealing. I'll be rinsing. And what I normally do with mine is that I don't initially rinse. I like to just unfold them and let the dye dry into the fabric and then come back and rinse. Because my goal is to make sure my colors are bright and brilliant. I love a bright color, y'all know me. So I'll be back shortly with the reveal of these, of these um, three pieces. All right, so it's time to unveil these. It's time to unveil these um, scarves. So this is how it comes out after the folds and I've removed the, um, the twist ties. So here's how it's gonna look as it's open. Number one, here's the second scar. I hope you guys are seeing this. This is the best part of doing this, is, is the unravel. Like, even I don't know how it's ever gonna turn out. I don't own this music. This is DJ Dan One. All right, number three. This one is a sarong size, so it's a little larger. And I also, in, in addition to, I don't know if you can see this, but in addition to um, using a test, test <laughs> twist ties to, to tie this, I also tried to make a design in this using thread. So I gathered the fabric here with this thread. So let's see if we can. I should have scissors here, but eh, I don't. Let's see if I can pull it out. No. Of course, I don't want to go back in the house, but I must. I'll be right back. We're going to be removing this thread. I'm not going to say what the design was supposed to be in case it doesn't turn out to be such. If it does turn out right, I'll be very proud to announce what it was supposed to be. 
because again, especially when you're using the ice, you really don't have a lot of control over where the, the dye actually ends up going. Because you're applying the um, dye with the ice, so you have to, you know, the ice has to, is distributing, determining where the design goes. But I don't know. All these pieces are going to be available. The, the scars will be... Seventeen, and the Chiron will be twenty-five. Of course, it'll be edge. All right. So here's the reveal. All right, let's make sure. I want to give you guys a closer look. So what do you guys think? I'm looking for comments, looking for feedback as always. And I'm also looking for customers as well. <laughs> so there we go. Thank you very much for joining me if you've been a part of this video. I appreciate your time and your energy. Please stay safe out there and have a blessed day. From Angela, live direct from West Palm Beach, Florida. One love.